okay, I need to preface before we get into this one, just because I know it's gonna be an issue for a lot of people. It's a very sensitive subject. We're gonna talk about parenting. I am a non-parent. I have chosen not to procreate or bring a soul into the universe. That's the decision I've made. I don't think I'm better than you because I made that decision, but I made that decision so I could avoid being a parent that resented my children or was too sick to take care of them, or wasn't up to standard. And mostly I did it because I didn't want to. I didn't want to be a mother. I made that decision after many, many years of wanting to be a mother. But recently, after a couple years, I decided I didn't actually want to be a mom. Moving into my mid-30s, I'm actually pretty happy with my life, and I'm good not procreating. But the reason my partner and I made this decision, the reason we sat down and talked about this in great length, we don't want to be those parents we see often on the internet or in our lives who resented being parents, who don't actually enjoy being there or that weren't the greatest parents. So for us, we took that into consideration. So when they and I watch these videos together, for us, when we watch these videos, we're like, oh, these are the kinds of people we were trying to avoid being when choosing not to have children, in our opinion, no shame to these mothers because they are putting their vulnerability out on the internet. But when we watch these videos together, we both felt like, yep, this is exactly what we were trying to avoid. So let's watch these videos with an open mind that we're trying to avoid putting our kids or ourselves through experiences where we resent, hate, or don't wanna be around our own children, right? Because I think that's important. Okay, I've said my piece, let's watch this. I don't want to see my kids every single day. I said it and I'm fully aware that the comment section is probably going to go off and I've never really wanted to address this kind of comment before because number one I feel like sometimes these are loaded questions this hold on this question is do you have any regrets separating as you do uh don't see the kids every day I'm not particularly but when people say don't you miss your kids don't you wish you had your kids full time I always feel like it's said in a way of like, oh, what a rubbish person you are because you don't want to see your kids every day. I don't want to have my kids full time. If I had to have them full time for any reason, of course I would. Of course I would. And I would embrace it and I would make that our life. But here's something that I was very stern with when we had kids originally and we were together that the, being parents is a 50-50 job. Nothing sits all on me. And I think society still sits everything on the mother of the children, which personally to me feels really unfair. Now, since we've... I just want to stop here really fast. This is a little bit of a long video, so I want to give her a chance to explain herself. But things that stand out to me already. One, I agree with her that a lot of responsibilities fall on the women or the females in the relationship or the female presenting person, which I think is wrong, or the femme person. And I think that is wrong, right? I don't think relationships are 50-50. I think they're 100-100 in my opinion. So I don't really believe in the 50-50 mindset in relationships. I think that that, in my mind, doesn't make any sense to how I work as a human, but you do you. I think 50-50 sounds like we're we're um, taking note or holding people, like we're taking, like we're counting how many things you did today versus like, it's just a hundred, hundred. Like I often say, you know, I haven't done a dish in months. Okay. I do dishes sometimes. I do it when I want to. I do, I don't do laundry because you know, the machine scares me, but like, you know, my partner does all the household stuff. Okay. I work, he does all the household stuff and I like this setup. It's great. But sometimes even I want to mop my kitchen. I don't know why. I don't know if you're like me where you're just like, I want to sweep today. I don't know what it is, girl, but I like that I get to do it because I want to, and he has to do it because it's his job. But also if he's sick and he needs help, if I'm sick and we need help, we are a team. We work together. When I'm not feeling it, he pulls me up. When he's not feeling it, I pull him up. We work together. Now, this situation is a little unique because they're separated, but I will say that you know, every dynamic is going to be different and unique. When she says she doesn't want to see her kids every day, that's fine. But let me tell you this. My parents are adults. They're 65, give or take. I am 35 and my parents would want to see their kids every day. If my parents could, their kids could see them every day and they would love it. When I say my parents really wanted to be parents, they really love their kids. That's what I mean. Now, of course, it's hard to see any other adult when they're being frustrating. But as long as we're getting along, like my parents want to see us every day. My parents also have an open door policy. Like I don't have to call ahead before I go to my parents' house. We don't have to announce we're coming. Like I can just go over to my parents' house and start eating out of their fridge and they would love it. They would just like be so excited 
you know, they would just be like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad you're home. Like if I flew from Croatia to California right now and didn't tell them and just showed up, they would be so excited. Okay. So I grew up with parents who wanted to see me every day, who took just so much happiness and joy in tucking their kids into bed, saying good night, you know, showing them love, hugging us, kissing us, being very affectionate. So, you know, give or take. Now, also remember that every child in a, in a family has a different relationship with a parent. So I'm only speaking from my experience. I don't know how my other siblings feel about our parents, but I know from my perspective, it felt like my parents really wanted to be my parent. Since we've had kids, so my oldest will be seven next year. So let's say for the last six years, I've raised the kids and worked full time at the same time. I run my own business from home. I've also done 18 months in lockdown during that time. So I have constantly been on the go dealing with work and children. I've not felt like I was the best mum because I was splitting my time to work at the same time. And I didn't feel like I was the best businesswoman because I was having to deal with the kids all the time. It was okay. So great point. In my opinion, the reason we, my partner and I, one of the reasons, I'm going to say the reason, but it's really many, 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 many reasons. We didn't have children because we were going to get burnt out having them. We were genuinely going to get burnt out. We're both neurodivergent, chronically ill. Realistically, I work every day of the week and I need to either put 100% into something, but I couldn't be a good mother and a good businesswoman. And so it wasn't an option for me to be half of either. I think it's one thing to be put in a position where you do the best you can with what you have, like you're a single parent or you are in a position where you have kids and you're not prepared with your teen partner or like you are, you know, there, there are situations where people are struggling. But before you make those decisions, like my partner and I, we didn't have kids so we could prevent children. We make decisions based off of like, what standard of parenting can we provide? We have a pretty high standard of parenting because we believe in ge breaking generational curses and we believe in doing better than our parents did because we think we owe it to our children not to put them through the same burdens that our parents put us through because every generation should be better than their parents before. So do we have the skills, the time, and the energy to give our kids that life? And the truth is no. We'd have to make a lot more money. We'd have to live in a different place. The education system is bad in everywhere that I'm looking and places I can't afford. I'm not willing to bring a new life into the universe that I can give a better living to or existence to than I had before me. My parents gave me a better life than they had, but I can't guarantee my kid would have a better life than I had. And so for me, it's not worth it. Now, when she says, you know, she's expressing burnout, she's expressing almost like a bitterness to the burnout. That's the thing you need to take into consideration before choosing to have children and bringing them into the universe. When I was a professional nanny, most of the parents were burnt out. They were extremely tired and they had kids because they felt like they had to. They loved their kids, but they were obviously deeply burnt out. Not every family I had, you know, some families I had really made it work. They loved having kids. It was perfect. But for some of the families, you could see that they struggled. They were either doctors or worked in healthcare and they would come home so tired. And then on top of that, they have to give their kids baths. They have to have dinner with their kids. And that felt like a resentment. Now, in more traditional households, maybe you'll have a stay-at-home parent, somebody who can kind of help balance that. Those people get burnt out too. My sister-in-law is a stay-at-home mom. It's not like she doesn't get burnt out. It's a full-time job, especially since they're choosing to homeschool their children, right? Which we don't have to talk about qualifications for homeschooling, but you know, so they're doing the best they can, but they get burnt out. And I always tell her, you got to take time for yourself, girl. These kids will burn you out. And that's the thing with parenting. Children will burn you out, especially if you're a neurodivergent parent with sensitivity issues and your kid is making sounds. Like I always tell people, you know what, you know how you torture a parent? Giving their kids a toy with noise. And maybe that's just my neurodivergency. But the thing I hate the most is toys that make noise. Absolutely not. Now, Everyone handles parenting differently. So I'm not saying she's a bad person. I'm saying, how do we prevent people from becoming parents if they're going to end up like this? Because this can't be good for you. Like, ultimately, we want people who are parents who deeply want to be parents and who are meant to be parents and know how to raise a better child than the generation before. But this is also a pipe dream since humans are animals and they just love to make babies. They just love to make babies. So, okay. It was a constant juggle. For seven years, I've had a kid at home with me full time as well as working. Now, when the kids go to school and when the kids go to him, I have space. 
I just want to say this is something parents plan for. They look forward to when their kids can go to school so they can have that time. And I think that's a really good way to look at it. Like your kids should go out. They should do other things. You know, they should, right? They should. But also, I don't, I think it should be like from a place of joy and not a place of anger or not a place of rejection or not a place of, I don't know how to say it, like exhaustion, but exhaustion is a part of parenting. You're not a bad person, okay, because you're an exhausted parent. Parenting is exhausting. It is the most exhausting job in the whole world. It is so tiring. So we're not saying it's not tiring, but I want to prevent people from being in these positions when they don't need to be. To get my work done and get myself back on track because six, seven years of grinding, hustling, I supported our entire family financially. He, he worked and he did earn money, but my income was far more significant and I covered most of our costs. I covered the huge bill of getting us back here and, and he's not afraid to completely admit that I carried everything on our shoulders. And with that came postnatal depression, you know, health issues, me other mental issues because I was so incredibly run down. So what I'm hearing here is I married the wrong person. I settled in a relationship and I felt like the burden of this relationship and the responsibilities were on my shoulders and I had no help. Anybody would get burnt out in this situation. She's living a life that many people are living and it's exhausting living with a partner that isn't a teammate, right? I want to say something to chat. Chat says, if your parents never ask about your queer experience, they are not doing everything they can to love their children. They are putting their belief system above wanting to know their kids. I love my parents. I don't need to ask them about their homophobia. When you love people unconditionally, you don't need to get to know their homophobia to love them. They don't need to get to know my queerness to love me. My parents don't love me because I'm gay. They love me because I'm the consciousness that is Brittany. My parents are doing everything they can to love me. They're not doing everything they can to get to know me. And if you don't know the difference, you need to learn the difference. I love humanity. I don't need to work to get to know her. I love every person on this planet. I don't need to get to know you, girl. Okay, with peace and love. Okay, with peace and love. Okay, so people can love you without needing to know the details. I love some of my male friends. I don't need to know about your weird Trump reason for voting. I don't need to know. Thank you, girl. Okay, I love you. Good luck with your life. I don't need to hear the details of how you think feminists are silly. Shh. Shh. But also, I'm not going to do it, but I still love you. So with peace and love, when you've really loved somebody that's different from you, you know how to love the consciousness without needing to go into the beliefs. You know? Okay. From doing everything. And as much as I'd never wish a separation on anyone... For me, this is my chance to feel finally like an equal parent and 50-50. So now he has to work out how to juggle kids and his job. And of course, we've organized our co-parenting relationship, so it is much easier on him because I am used to mm. juggling work and the kids. And I do have the flexibility to work at night or work early hours in the morning or work around the kids he doesn't because he has a physical job that trades time for money. So when I say I don't want to have my kids full time, it's because I feel like I deserve now some time to myself to work, but also to heal. I have Crohn's disease. Mm. My gut health is not in a great shape. My hair was falling out a few months ago because of the stress that's been on my body. This is my space and I use this time to heal myself, to get back on track. Of course I miss them, of course I miss them. But we live five minutes away from each other. And if I was having a really rough day and I needed to see the kids, I could call him and I could go see them. It would be no problem and equally the same for him. Next year when we go complete 50-50, I will have six full days where I do not see the children. <clears throat> I don't know if we'll do calls or whatever. That is going to be an adjustment for me. That is going to be the longest time that I have spent away from the children. I may feel differently. I might not. I might fully embrace it. But I think it's okay 
to not want or I don't know if that was the right word to use be kind to me I think it's okay to want space for yourself and want time away from the kids I think that's okay to want that because we need to make sure that we are okay and we are you know our cups are full so we can pour into our children I've been pouring from an empty cup ever since I became a mum so now it's time to flourish I could probably cover more on this, but I don't want this to go on for too long. Okay. So not talking about this consciousness, because she's obviously, it's too late. She did her, she made the mistake of becoming a mother in a big way. I'm not sure she would say it that way, but just the idea of like taking a break from your kids is like not six whole days in a row, right? Like, taking a break from your kids. I tell my sister-in-law all the time, you have got to take a break from the kids. You need your own space. That's like a couple of hours during the day spread out, not six days in a row. Fathers who spend time away from their children, who purposely are stressed out and do everything they can to not be at home with their kids. I think they're bad dads. I don't mean you're a bad person. I mean, you're a bad dad, which is different. I think she's kind of a bad mom, but not a bad person, right? When I say a mom, I mean the job that is mothering. For me, when I have a standard of parenting, one that I cannot reach because I am also chronically ill, so my heart goes out to her, I am breaking that generational curse by not having those kids. This is not something I'm doing. I'm not making this video to judge you as a parent. I'm doing this video to encourage you guys to prevent from making these decisions, right? I want you to say to yourselves, you are not a bad person for choosing not to be a parent. You are doing just as much as those kids choosing not to have them than you are by having kids you're ready to have, right? So this woman's a very good person. I can tell she's very well-intentioned, but in my opinion, she shouldn't have been a mother because it sounds like she doesn't want to do that job, right? In the same way that fathers who sign up for the military are in a way for a long time or truck drivers who are never home, you're a truck driver. You're not being a parent. A parent is present. In my opinion, a parent is present, Life gets in the way and separates you from your kids and that's horrible. But that's different because like there's nothing else I could do. This is the best thing I could come up with. That's beautiful, right? You're doing the best you can. But to say that on purpose, I want to be away from my kids is telling me that you didn't really want to do this job. Like if somebody said to me, like, I really love art, but I really am stressed by it and I I want to do it. I want to avoid it six days a week. I'd be like, I'm not sure that you really love art. Sounds like you're really not in love with it, right? So again, I'm not trying to say these are bad people. When I say you're a bad parent, in the same way that I would say like, you're kind of bad at your job, dude. Again, to my standard, not to yours. Now, co-parenting is good. Being close to your kids is good. But see how she said, if I'm really stressed and I need to see the kids, I can see them. What about when they want to see you? Did you hear her say that? That, hey, I'm five minutes away. If I'm ever stressed and I want to see the kids, I can see them. What if your kids ask, can I see you every day, mom? Could you do that for me? That's really where this comes into. How much, when do your kids get to request your time? Is it every day? Because if it is, great, right? But that's what I would like to know. And again, her kind of obsession with the 50-50 thing is hard for me because I'm not sure what that means. You know, in a world where all of us are, you know, fighting for our kids, in a world where some of us battle out in custody court for years just to be with our children, I think it can be hard to realize, like, some people volunteer separation from their kids. And this is hard to hear for people that are in positions of, like, all I want to do is see my kid, bro. Feeling like I couldn't even imagine how it feels. I've been reading up on uh, adoptions, I think, from Korea. Or was it China? I don't remember. And how the parents thought that their kids were being adopted out to American families, but they were going to be able to keep in touch. They thought they were sponsoring their kids to go live with American families to give them a better opportunity. They didn't think they'd lose track of their kids. A lot of the children you are adopting overseas are kidnapped children. They just call it adoption. And I couldn't imagine tearing away a child from a parent that is devastating. Like parents shouldn't have to give up their children because they can't afford them. All these parents in America, they're like, oh, well, I'm giving this kid a life they couldn't have with their original parents. Then fund their parents. Fund their parents. Don't take away their children. We shouldn't be taking away kids from families just because they don't have the funding. 
right? So we're living in a world where in some bubbles, parents are dying to have their children. And then in another bubble like this one, we're living in a world where mothers are choosing not to see their kids every day. I don't think this mother's a bad person. I think she wasn't meant to be a mother. In the same way that I obviously wasn't meant to be one. I'm not going to be a mother. That doesn't mean that at one point in my life, I could have been a mother. That doesn't mean that I wouldn't have made it work if I became a mother. It means that I'm choosing not to do that job because I don't think I could do 100% of it. Now, if you're in a position where you're assaulted and you have to have that pregnancy, where you were young and you made a mistake, where you thought you were making the right decision, you regret it later, you, then you do the best you can with what you have, right? You do the best you can with what you have. But in my opinion, I think it's better to prevent these things in the future. So instead of advocating for this to be a good solution, I would advocate for this to be the warning. Don't become parents because people are saying you should. Don't become a parent because you think it's what you have to do. Don't become a parent because, you know, someone's shaming you for not, for not choosing to be a child or not choosing to have a child. I don't think she's a good example of what we could be. She's an example. She's like a warning sign. She's a great example of why you shouldn't have kids unless you really want to. Unless you want to be a present parent. And again, remember, when I say people are bad parents, people in positions of privilege, people who are millionaires who choose to live away from their children, people who pick jobs to purposely keep them away from their families, I'm saying you're making a choice. And I think that choice is in contradiction to being a good parent or a good partner. That's my opinion. I'm not saying you're a bad person. I'm saying you're bad at your job, which to some people is the most offensive thing to say. Okay. She was the first example. Let's go to our second example. So motherhood can be deeply unsatisfying. Okay, here's my hot take. So don't come at me. But for the most part, motherhood is deeply unsatisfying. And we don't talk about it enough. Um, and I'm not saying that because I dislike my role as mother. And yes, I know I chose to be a mom. Um, I love being a mom. And I love my kids dearly. But 90% of my role as mother is not satisfying. It is the nitty gritty. It is getting kids to clean up after messes. It is reminding kids to wash their hands. Okay, I just wanna stop her here because I think this is important. When I was a nanny, I was deeply satisfied with that job. Not to do it for my whole life. And to be fair, at the time I thought I would become a mother. But when I was a nanny, I never minded any of these things. I didn't mind cleaning up. I didn't mind dirty diapers. I didn't mind throw up. I didn't mind when the kids threw tantrums. I didn't mind when the kids were like frustrating to get into the car. I just thought it was funny. You know what I mean? Because the kids are like, <laughs> like, I just, I don't know. Kids are funny. I always thought I was meant to be a mother because these things never bothered me. I think my mother is like a perfect example of somebody who was born to be a mother because she just like never complained about the fact that we were sick or never complained about being a mom. Sometimes we heard her feelings. Like sometimes I remember distinctly my mom would plan like beach days. She'd get the car ready and pack a lunch and then all the kids would be like, I don't wanna go. And I could see like we hurt our mom's feelings. I could also see my mom was struggling with her own unique trauma from childhood. And sometimes that would like explode and we would be like, oh my God. And then there was this reality where my mom was just a kid who grew up and had babies. And I'm just a kid who grew up and didn't. But like, we're all just like our own people trying to live good lives. And my mom was a working mom. And then she gave up her career to be a stay-at-home mom. And then she went back to having a job. Like these things are complicated, right? So when I hear her say like, these things are deeply unsatisfying, that is the part of being a caretaker and a mother that has to be in some ways, the parts that aren't as hard to, that's why like taking care of the elderly or just being a caretaker in general. Like I know I'd be really good at it because these things don't bother me. But also it takes a real strong person to do it all the time for a living. It does take a very strong person to be a parent because you are doing these things forever. And being a parent doesn't stop. Guys, you don't stop being a parent when your kid turns 18. My mom and dad are still people I call for advice. Like my parents didn't stop being parents because their kids turned 18. So for a lot of parents that are like, I can't wait till they're 18. So again, my message to you today is you don't have to be a parent just because society is telling you to be one convincing kids to eat the meals I make. I mean, it is a lot of work, so much work. And 
in and of itself, that part is not satisfying. Um, I do not go to bed most nights feeling satisfied in my role as mother. Far from it. If anything, I go to bed with intrusive thoughts, worrying about their future, feeling like I didn't do a good enough job. Um, and I wouldn't say in any sense that makes me a bad mom. If anything, that makes me a great mom. But it's not a satisfying feeling. I think somewhat of these women are online because they're hoping somebody will validate their experience. But I think this is like a warning sign to why we shouldn't force people to be parents and why you need to be able to say, like, you're not doing a good job. You're doing a good enough job. Look, the humanity is doing a good enough job, but obviously we could be better. Right. So I understand their desire to feel that this is stuff you talk to a therapist about. I think the right therapist can really help you with this stuff to be like, you're valid for being stressed out being a mom. OK, but also it feels weird to go to bed, not being deeply satisfied, being a parent. Why did you have children? Like, why did you have children and parents who are raised by kids or parents, kids who are raised by parents and they feel that way about their parents? Like, trust me when I say this, like paying for your kids rent isn't going to be enough. It's going to be fine. Like all of humanity truly is doing its best, guys. I'm not here to ask for a perfect, you know, population or, you know, species or whatever. But this feels like something a therapist would have to work with you on. We shouldn't force people to be parents if they're going to turn out like this, you know? And I, I'm saying this um, out loud because I don't think we talk about it enough. And for a long time, I felt like I was doing it wrong because I saw other people, other moms on social media beaming and glowing about the milestones, talking about how satisfying this role is and wondering if I was doing it wrong. And the truth is we just don't talk about the unsatisfying parts. And I think we should. I think we should too. I think we should talk about the fact that some people truly do not want to be mothers. I think we should talk about the fact that some of us just don't want to do that job and you looking down on us for not wanting to do that job is missing the point that if we have those kids, then we're not going to be as good as a parent who really wanted those kids. When people say like, once you have a kid, you'll see, yeah, of course, once you have a kid, you do your best, but we shouldn't be forcing people to have children, right? Um... Hold on. Chad said something that I thought was funny about the food. Like you could ask the kids what they want to eat. You know what's funny is like obviously as a nanny, the kids like you want to get them a certain amount of nutrition, like nutri nutritional like foods in their diet as much as possible. And it was kind of fun for me to find ways for the kids to like sneak in vegetables. These babies were so smart. These babies were so smart. They, I would give them a spoonful of like meat and carrots and they would like sit there and chew and just like eat the meat and spit out the carrot. And I'm like, like they were so smart. So it became like my job to figure out, like I would sit in the kitchen while they were napping and come up with concoctions and recipes to try to get them to eat their vegetables. And it was so funny because you would think it's a baby. How does it know what the, what's in its mouth? And they're like, oh, they, they're like, is that a carrot? I'm not going to eat that. And I'm like, okay, look, girl, look, girl. So again, maybe I think it's funny. And I still, even to this day, I think it's so funny. I think baby has got to be the funniest little group of people. And like, look, you know, what's hard? A teenager. That sounds hard. You know, what sounds hard? A middle schooler. That sounds hard, but that's still your baby. And that is the hardship of being a parent. You have to deal with a teenager. You have to deal with a grown up or a growing human. Who's going to become a grown up. You got to, you got to deal with a little bean that came out of your body, or maybe you adopted them and they grow up to be this person with their own thoughts and their own beliefs and their own voting habits. And you got to deal with that. And you got to love them regardless. I believe in unconditional love. Now, I don't think it's a guarantee your parents will love you because from a very human perspective, like a biological experience, there might be some parents who don't have that connection with their offspring. And I think those children need to be, you know, loved regardless. So we need to figure that out. But I don't think parents are obligated to love their children. And I know I've said this before and people don't hear what I'm saying. So please go to therapy if you're triggered by this. I really, I mean that with no offense. Go to therapy because it will change your life. If you find the right therapist, not all parents will technically love their children because the experience they're having with love is dictated by their own fulfillment. And sometimes in order for a parent to feel connection to their offspring, they need to feel that satisfaction with the job itself. I know there's this idea, this like belief we have that, oh, if you just have a baby, you'll love it. If that was true, parents wouldn't traffic their kids. Like, let's grow the fuck up. If it was as simple as every parent would love their child simply by having it, 
A lot of parents wouldn't be doing the things they're doing to their kids right now. So if you're going to force people to have children, you need to think about what you're forcing that child into. And I don't think it's worth it. And that's why I think conservatives need to get their shit together when it comes to this idea of pressuring people to have children they don't want. Because let me tell you, humans are not more than these animals that are gonna take their aggression and bitterness out on their kids and their kids will know it. One of the reasons I know I am deeply loved by my parents is because they didn't mind all of these things. I tell you guys this all the time. When I got, first got my period, I called my dad and I was like, you need to come home from work and you need to make me soup and you need to help me. I'm bleeding. And I called my dad and he came home. He made me soup and he tucked me into bed because my mom and dad worked really hard to make sure they had a life where they could be there for their kids. My brother is doing the same thing. My brother with five kids, he purposely found a career, pays well, works from home full time and him and his wife get to be there. So anytime your kid is sick, they can take them to the hospital. Anytime their kid is in trouble, and they did this before they had kids, they made these plans. Before they had kids, they said, okay, we're, this is how our life's gonna go because they wanted to make sure they could provide that for their children. So before you've had kids, think about your career. Before you've had kids, please think about your ability to take your kids to the hospital at midday because like this mother said, the original working mother, a lot of parents can't leave work to go go be with their kids. And maybe we could live in a universe where that was true. But if you're going to play this game of life, play it to your advantage. Play it to your advantage. And try to get it where you can be as present in your kid's life as possible because they didn't ask to be here. So if you're going to bring them into existence, try to move your life in a direction where you can be there for them. Don't ruin your life for the sake of your kids, but don't ruin your kid's life for the sake of your own. It's about that balance. I never put my marriage above myself and I never put myself above my marriage, okay? I never put my family above myself. I never put myself above my family. It's all about working in positive symbiosis, okay? So again, I don't want these mothers to think they're evil people. I wanna get to the point though, where even the best of people don't have to feel pressure to be the worst of parents because it's so unnecessary. These women, they're doing their best, fine but they are exactly the example I would give of why we shouldn't force people to be parents. Cause not everybody is meant to be one. I know that can sound painful. You remember when love is blind, the guy was dating Micah and he said, I don't see you as like being a mother. I don't think you're the type to be a mom. And people who found that offensive, even Dr. Kirkonda was like, oh, that's such a mean thing to say. But I feel the same way about Micah. The more I see her, the more I think like, girl, <sighs> when I say be a mom, I mean, put the child's needs above your own, but never at expense of. And Micah was just the type of person in the show who would always make herself the center of attention. She would be the child. And in both of the shows I saw her on, I was like, you can't be a mother. A person, a parent, whether it's a man or a woman who's willing to throw a tantrum and need more attention than the child in a situation is not meant to be a parent. That doesn't mean you can't be a person who's meant to be a parent because I don't really believe in destiny that hard, like you're destined to be a parent or not. It's just words we use, right? You can become a person who makes a better parent. But if there's two people throwing a tantrum and one of them is the other adult, we're gonna have a problem, okay? The child can't be throwing a tantrum and the adult in the room. We're gonna have a problem. Let's see, what are your thoughts on stay-at-home moms? I'm a stay-at-home mom, but because of that, my husband only gets about four hours a day with our daughters, but he's a manager, so he can leave in case of an emergency. You know, I think it's always best to have a parent at home if possible, even if they're working from home. I think that's really great to have your children accessible to you. And then of course they go to school, and so that makes sense. They wouldn't be as, they wouldn't be as accessible. I think uh, the burden of being the working parent is that you don't always get to see your kids. Like. That sucks. I think the working parent in many ways should feel like, damn, I'm really missing out on my kid's life, but somebody has to work. Somebody has to work. So it is somewhat of a, a bummer, but also a part of life. Like somebody has to be the breadwinner at the end of the day. And so that kind of, that kind of painful. I think what was so painful as a nanny was both parents working when really one of them should have stayed home, but they were always so worried about their careers, like pivoting, which is true. So if you're career minded and you really want to have a career, I just think that at the end of the day, that's going to impact the kids. I'm not moralizing it in a sense for Brittany. I have to moralize it because those are my morals. But at the end of the day, people have to do what they have to do. Like I just, I talked to so many kids and every kid is different. You just don't know which kind of kid you're going to have who resent the fact that they didn't know their parents growing up. 
because they're like, my parents were working. I didn't have parents. And so sometimes you wonder why your kids don't want to hang out with you on the holidays or why they don't feel so safe with you. And it's like, well, because dur during their formative years, they didn't know either of their parents. And so like at the end of the day, as long as you as a parent are willing to accept that you might have a child that doesn't like that, fine. But also you might have a kid that's like, oh, my parents were never home and I loved it. But do they feel close to you? There are so many kids I read about or hear from people that I know that are just like, yeah, I don't really want to see my parents every Christmas. Like I didn't even really know them. Like we barely saw each other every day for a couple of hours. And like that would kill me as a parent. So my dad was a working dad. He'd come home every day and spend time with us and make sure that we were loved. And then on the weekends, we got to spend time with my dad. He just made it clear that he wanted to be present. But we also grew up in the kind of house with a 90s dad that also made the boys do chores on the weekends with him. Like, hey, we're going to fix this fence and we're going to dig this hole. So the boys also didn't have weekends because they worked with my dad. And like, so we also grew up with that kind of like, like, you know, there's always a push and pull of like, I feel loved. You want to hang out. But also every weekend I have to like build a fence with you. But yeah, we can. So we come from that bubble where spending time with your dad is also doing chores and you're like, and same thing with my mom, like spending time with my mom could be getting our nails done or it could be like doing chores because like your family unit works together. Like all these people who fantasize about a, a family unit where we all help each other out. You, you know, that means the kids also help out. That means the kids also work like they don't bring money to the home, but they do chores around the house. So, you know, it's kind of nice. There's always advantages and disadvantages. Like some kids, oh my God, you know what I learned about earlier? Bedroom kids. So like kids who spent most of their time growing up in their bedrooms. I was not this child. I don't know about my other siblings. I can't speak for them, but I was a living room child. I was a kitchen living room child. I preferred to sit on the couch and do my work. I preferred to be in the kitchen. I preferred to be in the middle of everything. I didn't like being in my room. I wanted to be in the middle of the, the gossip and the talking and the cooking and the, the noise. So I was a living room kid. And I think that's so like interesting and different about all of us. Like some people grow up their whole life being on their computer in their room and never leaving. But I was the girl who took my laptop to the couch. I had a spot. Brittany had a spot. I had a blanket. I had my favorite pillows. Everyone knew that was like Brittany's spot. And I would sit on the spot and I would just like, I wanted to be in the middle of it all. You know, when my mom was cooking, I'd like walk over and be like, what are we eating? What's happening? You know, I just wanted to be in the middle of it. So, you know, know who you are in the story and then accept that you might have a kid who has different relationships. But then some of those kids become bedroom kids because... Maybe they don't feel safe in the living room, right? So maybe that there's that. But I just, you know, you have to ask yourself, like, what is your story? And, like, how do the kids feel about it? Or maybe you're just a kid who's neurodivergent and you want some silence, so you like the bedroom. feels like the home is still a part. We're still a part of the home, even though none of our bedrooms are still there. Like, all of our bedrooms got turned into a guest bedroom or a music room. But yet, when we go over, my mom has, like, four inflatable mattresses. She had tons of covers and pillows. She always has an extra bedding set washed and ready to go in case somebody comes to visit. You know? There's just, like there's a feeling of we're always welcomed home, which is always so nice. Yeah, there's something really special about that. And not everybody gets that. So if you have it, be grateful. Yeah, you know, <laughs> Sage says, yeah, she wants you there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. My parents make it very convenient for us to come over. They want us, they want us to come over. It's a very nice feeling, you know. Okay, with that said, uh, shout out to the parents who are able to stay home with their kids. What a blessing. Shout out to the parents who make it work, even if you both have to work, because I know this economy sucks. And shout out to the people who never became parents so they could break those generational curses. And shout out to the parents who became parents to break those generational curses and accomplished it. That's also beautiful. Don't have a kid just to break a generational curse. Have a kid because you love them and you absolutely feel called to doing this job we call parenting. Dun, 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 dun.